For all the shapes and sizes that have marked the aerodynamic evolution of an aircraft wing, the search continues for the refinements and advanced technologies that would add a little more lift, a little more maneuvering performance, and generally better aerodynamic efficiencies. Among the varied shapes that have prevailed through the years have been a few designs for a forward swept wing, long known for its efficiency, more usable lift, and low speed handling. Unfortunately, the forward swept wing is structurally unstable with an inherent tendency toward divergence. When you load up the forward swept wing, it bends, increasing its angle of attack with respect to the airstream and thus increasing the air loads on the structure. The greater the speed, the greater the aerodynamic forces, until the increment in aerodynamic forces is greater than the structural restoring forces. At that instant of divergence, the wing is literally torn from the fuselage. With an aft swept wing, the aerodynamic forces oppose the motion of the wing, keeping it in a state of constant equilibrium by decreasing the angle of attack, thus relieving the air loads. In order to prevent divergence in a metallic forward swept wing, the structure must be made stiffer. However, this brings with it weight penalties that negate any aerodynamic advantages. But now it has been shown by Colonel Norris Crone of the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency that the weight penalty normally associated with divergence prevention of a forward swept wing can be greatly reduced by the proper tailoring of advanced composite materials. This is achieved by orienting the composite tape in the wing covers so as to reduce the angle of attack due to wing bending. The point of this study is to determine just how accurately we can predict divergence speed. The method, calculate divergence speeds of a tailored, composite, aeroelastic wing model representative of a full-scale design. Build the model, test it, and compare tunnel results with the calculations. Under a contract sponsored by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency and monitored by the Air Force Wright Aeronautical Laboratories, a forward swept wing aircraft design, which the Grumman Aerospace Corporation had been working on, was selected as a baseline for the aeroelastic model to be fabricated. The Grumman flight demonstrator employs supercritical airfoil technology and a variable camber trailing edge device to gain the best performance over a wide range of lift coefficients. For the model analysis, the first step was to set up a computer program using aerodynamic and structural routines to predict divergence speed. The Woodward aerodynamic routine was used for both subsonic and supersonic divergence analyses. It was backed up by an unsteady aerodynamic routine for flutter analysis, a doublet lattice program for subsonic prediction, and supersonically, a mock box routine. Results of the analyses were then used in the design of a half-scale reflection plane model of the Grumman forward swept wing flight demonstrator. The major tooling elements included cutting the templates, fabrication of a male plaster model, layup of the female mold upper wing surface, trimming, layup of the female mold lower wing surface, Fabrication of a high temperature male mold. Fabrication of a high temperature female tool. Leading and trailing edge tools. And forward and aft spar molds. Initially, computer aided methods were used to design the tooling templates and to prepare drawings and the tapes for numerically controlled machines. These tapes precisely control fabrication of the tooling templates. A series of 15 templates was made and set up at various span locations representing the wing plan form and profile. Parting blocks along the trailing and leading edges established the parting surface between the upper and lower molds. Plaster was then applied to the upper wing surface and fared to a very smooth contour, even with the edges of the templates. 
temperature limitations of the plaster molds made it necessary to build up gradually to the high temperature molds required for later curing of the final graphite parts. Therefore, from the low temperature male plaster cast, a low temperature female mold of the upper surface was first made using fiberglass and resin. After the parting blocks were removed and the legs trimmed, the lower surface of the male tool was plastered and a low temperature female cast made of the lower surface. The female molds, in turn, were used to make high temperature male casts from which the high temp female molds required for actual wing cover fabrication and model assembly were made. The low temperature fiberglass leading and trailing edge tools were made from the high temperature female mold and from these, the spar tools were made. With tooling complete, wing fabrication began. Graphite tape was carefully laid up on mylar sheets marked with the orientation and area of each layer of the wing cover laminate. The cover design required a maximum of 10 layers in the spanwise direction at the root and a minimum of one layer in the cordwise direction. The layers and patterns varied over the wing cover to achieve the desired aeroelastic coupling effect. There's a mylar for every layer and four different tape orientations. The tape, by the way, specially developed for this project, is one inch wide, 1.37 mil unidirectional graphite epoxy, about three times thinner and narrower than standard tape. Use of standard tape would not have allowed the accurate distribution of stiffness required for an aeroelastically tailored, structurally representative model. With layup complete, the skins were autoclave cured at 350 degrees and 80 PSI. Ultrasonic testing of the completed cover ensured that there were no laminate voids. Strain gauges to be used later during proof load and wind tunnel testing were mounted on the inside of the cover to preserve the smooth aerodynamic wing surface. A tracing machine with a follower and a cutter was used to fabricate a honeycomb core to tie the wing surfaces together. The tracer followed a male pattern of the interior surface of the wing. A perfect match of the core to the very flexible graphite skin is essential to accurately preserve the shape of the supercritical wing section. In the meantime, the spars were being fabricated of fiberglass cloth impregnated with high temperature resin laid in the mold vacuum bagged for curing, and stabilized with foam. The leading and trailing edge assemblies were fabricated in essentially the same way, but at low temperatures. Then all parts were pre-fitted and adjustments made where necessary for proper alignment. In assembling the wing box, adhesive was applied and the core, covers, spars, and aluminum root were fitted together in the high temperature assembly tool, put in an autoclave and cured. The adhesion was tested ultrasonically. The wing box assembly was then placed in the main assembly tool to install the leading and trailing edges and to complete the strain gauge wiring. With the model complete, a stiffness test was conducted to update calculations of divergent speed. Loads were applied to the wing and structural influence coefficients measured to determine wing rotation with respect to the airstream. Strain gauges were calibrated at the same time. By projecting a grid pattern on special ultra-flat first surface mirrors installed at 20 key aerodynamic points on the upper wing surface, the rotation due to load could be seen. In all, 400 coefficients were measured. The measured structural data showed good agreement with previous analytical predictions. For proof loading, location of the load fixtures was based on providing the most reasonable representation of the maximum calculated tunnel load distribution. A gradual buildup of loads to 1.2 times the calculated loads 
simulated the aircraft's limit load condition to 8 Gs. Typical displacements in the order of 8 inches at the wingtip compared very favorably with predicted data. To update calculations of flutter speed, mass characteristics of the model were measured and a vibration survey conducted, completing the pre-tunnel test program. The wing was vibrated at its structural resonances and displacement measured with accelerometers at selective wing points. Again, correlation with predicted data was good. The Grumman flight demonstrator model was ready for the wind tunnel. At the Langley 16-foot transonic dynamics tunnel, the fuselage was mounted on a turntable to vary the angle of attack. The fuselage fairing was aerodynamically representative and was geometrically scaled to simulate the airplane flow characteristics. Wing and canard installation followed. Testing started at 30% of the calculated wing divergence speed. Both tunnel conditions and model strains versus angle of attack were recorded at intervals of increasing dynamic pressures to within 85% of divergence, going beyond the aircraft's speed envelope. The data acquired were used as input to a NASA-developed interactive computer program. This program predicted divergence speed based on model measurements. Predictions were updated by the computer program with data acquired at increasing levels of dynamic pressure. Satisfactory convergence of predicted values was observed for all test Mach numbers. Wing loading was varied over a range of minus 3 Gs to 6.3 Gs and linear behavior observed. In reviewing the tunnel data, divergent speed calculations came within 5% of tunnel values over the critical flight range. This program successfully met its objectives. First, it showed that wind tunnel models can be made which accurately simulate the mass and stiffness properties of a full-scale tailored composite structure. Second, it validated the accuracy of Grumman's divergence analysis procedures, which allows us to pursue with confidence the design and fabrication of a full-scale, divergence-free, forward-swept wing.